Hey YouTube, what's going on? Uh, I have today what I hope is going to be a great little video on a fantastic little printer. This is the Mega S from Anycubic. Alright, so I've already taken it out of the box, as you can see, and I've laid out all the parts here. This, uh, like I said, this is the Mega S from Anycubic. I already own one of these printers, and I actually really love it. I'm much more of a big printer guy, if you could see around, as you would know. Um, but for a little machine, this is a fantastic printer. So I actually sold my Ender 3 when I got my first one of these. Um, so it's uh, it's very similar. It's a 210 by 210 by 205 build. It's a super solid metal frame. Uh, and uh, the new, one of the upgrades, there's only two upgrades between the i3 Mega and the Mega S and I will show you one of them right now, is the new filament holder. They used to include a separate acrylic one that was just a spool holder that sat off to the side. Now they have this one that's actually, they call it a floating uh, filament rack or a suspended filament rack. It just mounts right on the side. And then the only other difference is they have a new Titan style extruder, which is nice. So what else is in the box, you might say? all kinds of things. So we've got the base, all the guts run inside, all the electronics, everything's built in. Nice little touch screen. It does come with ultra base. And let's take this little ultra base label -y thing off right now. I'm very much a, a mirror guy and I have really come to love the ultra base, especially on my Predator. So pop that in the recycling. All right, so we've got this. Now, power cord, after sales and service card. I've said it before, I will say it again. I am really, really amazed at the amount of spare parts that any cubic provides. So you have a spare hot end, five extra nozzles, a spare limit switch, bonus. Then you've got the whole bag of tools, uh, USB cable with rubber gloves because they don't want you to get your hands dirty, nozzle cleaners, this fantastic, I love these, um, their print removal tools. Uh, SD card with a USB SD card reader, the filament rack, some extra filament, little samples, and a whole kilo of white PLA. Their inspection card, their little, hey, join our club and get 15% off coupon. And the usual Mega S full color manual. These are really nice. There's a lot of nice touches that a lot of other companies don't do. I would say most other companies don't do. Anyway, uh, let me move some stuff around and we will start building it. Okay, so I just have the base and the X gantry. So this is probably the hardest, hardest printer build you're ever going to do. Ready? Take the supplied screws. Put those right there. And then I'm going to guess an M4 or a 4 millimeter. It is. Okay. Lift up the X. Put it right here like this. Lift up the back because the wires have to go under. Lower it back into place. Find the screws, or the screw holes. There's eight screws. Once we get one in on each side, I think we'll be safe. Sorry my arm's in the way, but you have to lift this up a little bit just so it gets in the right position. Okay, got all four screws in, or all eight screws in, sorry. And a couple things really quick, just on this side right here, 
you just want to make sure that you set your power supply to the correct country. I am in North America. I am set to 110. Also, just in case I didn't show you before, power outlet on off switch right here. I know I didn't show you before. And then here on this side, we have the USB port and the full size SD card slot. Now, they're actually really good about kind of tucking things away when they ship things. So this is super easy to connect everything. There are really only three plugs, red, green, black. So the red cable is actually kind of tied up under here to keep it nice and tucked away in there for shipping. So when you're wondering why you can't find the red cable, it's right here. So that one goes on top. I'm just gonna go from the bottom up. So the very bottom cable is the black, then the green for the extruder or for the hot end, and then the red. There we go, snapped in, all good. And then this is just the cable for the filament out sensor and that goes right here. Ta-da. Okay, the printer is pretty much built. All we need to do now is just add the filament spool holder, which is this guy right here. So, take our other little bag. All right, so I have my two screws and I'm just gonna grab a two and a half millimeter. Now this guy goes like this. Let me, let me move. that way. So you just basically take the this flat end goes up against here. So I'm just gonna pop both screws in and see if they jump out at me. I'm sure they will because that's how I roll. Nope, there's no screw jumping today. Yeah, one thing I don't really like about these spool holders, I love the design and the way they work, but I don't love that they're only slightly rounded and they're mostly flat. So I've seen some things on Thingiverse where people just kind of snap something over them. I may or may not do that. I haven't had a problem yet, so I can't really complain. So, and then installing this is super easy. Let me see if I can get the right angle here. From the front. Here we go. So is that two and a half? Yep. You just basically loosen these two side screws up a little bit, the ones on the outside. A little more. One. Just loosen them up enough to, just to be able to slide that in. And tighten it back down. And we have spool holder. All right, everything's plugged in. Let's now plug it in and turn it on. I have my trusty extension cord down here.
and it sings. All right, so I moved some stuff, so now we can actually shoot the printer. So I have my little camera here so you can see the screen, what I'm doing. So basically, you've got your nozzle temp, bed temp, and then it tells you, hey, it's an i3 mega, and there's no SD card in there right now. So you can go to tools, and you put all these options. So I'm gonna home it, and I'm gonna home all, and hope I didn't forget to disconnect a clip or something. Nope, we look good. So now, on my i3 Mega, I may actually pull it up here, um, just to kind of compare the two. I did make a couple of small modifications on there, but other than that, it's pretty stock. Uh, I did change the part cooling duct, because I found a much better one that wrapped around, as opposed to just pushing from one side. And uh, I added, you know, the standard things. Uh, I added a little support here that someone had designed on Thingiverse, just to kind of keep this one connector because the way this works on the inside there's all the other little connectors there's a breakout PCB board PCB board in there and that's where both fans plug in the part cooling fan and the heatsink fan and also the heater and the thermistor all plug in and run up through this one green wire so there's that so now we're homed and I also printed out uh, just some bigger leveling knobs because it's easier because I'm old and I can't see so so good you know um, what else did I do? I added a camera mount. That doesn't do anything except let me use a camera easier. And that's really it. Those are the only changes I made. So uh, I do also add, uh, if anybody's curious, it's funny, in one of the other Facebook groups, uh, there was somebody had just posted that they molded their own uh, silicone sock for the printer. And I was like, well, hey, I just got some Lurge BP6 ones from Amazon and they work. All you have to do is snip a little cut in the top of it and so they wrap around the heater and thermistor. So I'll probably do that um, while I'm shooting instead of later. Uh, anyway, so now that it's home, I'm gonna heat it up. So I'm gonna go back and then I'm just gonna go to preheat and I'm gonna preheat PLA. And that's it. And I'm gonna let it get hot and then we can level the bed. Okay, so I'm back, and it's had a few minutes to heat up. The bed is at 50, the nozzle's at 190. Those are their presets for preheat PLA. So now we can, let's see, are we loose here? We are loose here, so we can go ahead and level the bed. So where's my paper? Here it is. So this is a manual level machine, so all you do is, let me go back and just make sure that I am honed. Home Z. All right, so that is pretty high up. I got some raising to do here. I'm gonna raise both at the same time, so they're somewhat even back up higher. All right, and I think we're good. Great. So let me move some things around and we'll show you how to load the filament. Okay, I am going to use some of my Econofil Neat from filaments.ca. This is some of the stuff that's still left from the, what they sent me for the Predator video. So I'm going to pop that in. So what you're going to do is you're going to go with the filament coil under. It goes right on. And then it goes right through the filament sensor. Sometimes it's a little uh, tricky. There we go. and then it's going to go right up I have a piece of Capricorn tube sticking out of mine so it's a little easier and it's a Titan style so you just pull back on this lever here to be able to 
speed it right up. And I'm just going to push it up till it just barely stops. All right. Now let's see if we can see the screen here. Close enough. All right. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to axis. Now. This is negative, this is positive, and then you have, I don't know what LMH stands for, but fast, medium, slow. That's how it works for me. So I'm gonna raise the Z up some, and I can do it fast. All right, close enough. Now I'm gonna to go to filament and then just hit the filament in button. And now it's gonna start feeding. Oh, a little kink there. And in just a second, you will see some filament. Oh, hey, look, there. They apparently tested it with white. All right, so it's loaded. Just hit stop. We can get rid of this. Okay, now, where did I put that SD card? I know, it's behind the desk. Please hold, wasn't behind the desk. I remembered, it's right here. So I'm not gonna slice anything crazy for this. I am just really going to print the, the demo print on here. So pop the SD card in and it does go upside down. Just go back to the home and then print. I'll pair G code. Who knew? So I'm going to just tap it and then normally I would just hit print, but I'm going to set this up and time lapse it for you guys and we will be back in a second. Also, before I go this time and show you the time lapse, I don't know if I had mentioned this yet, but I'm going to give one of these away, so stay tuned for more info on that. And there it is. So as you can see, like I said, it really is a nice little printer. I've had my other one for a couple months now. I use it pretty frequently, more than I thought I would. Especially, again, I can't stress enough, for ABS, not enclosed. It's really, really good. The only thing I do is I just use some masking tape on the bed, and that way I don't have to worry about putting anything on the Ultra Base because the Ultra Base is so nice. Now, rewind a second. One thing I did do is this filament does require something, you know, a little higher temperatures. This actually, I run about 220. So it did require a little change. So I did have to re-slice the owl file. So just saying. Um, so I did re-slice the owl file and print it a second time just to show you. So anyway, but you can see they came out great. It's a, it's a nice printer. Um, again, quick 210 by 210 by 205. Um, and the difference between the Mega S and the original i3 Mega is just this spool holder that's mounted and the Titan style extruder. That's it. Only differences. Everything else is identical. So there's that. Now, I may have mentioned something about giving one of these guys away. So here's the deal. Anycubic has given me uh, a factory refurbished Mega S and I am going to give one away when I hit 1,000 subscribers. 
it's not really ridiculous because I'm like halfway there. So hopefully soon, hopefully quick. Um, what you have to do in order to enter is number one, you need to subscribe and your subscriptions need to be visible because we have to verify these. So you need to subscribe to my channel, this one right here. You also need to subscribe to the Anycubic uh, YouTube channel and I'll put a link in the box down there. Also, like the Versus 3D Facebook page, I'll put a link in the box. Also, like the Anycubic Facebook page. Also, oh, there's Tiger. Uh, I will put a link in the box. Ty, come here, buddy. Come say hi. Um, it's going to be a random drawing. We just have to be able to, because they need to verify that you actually did all the things. And if you do that, hey, this printer in the U.S. is 300 bucks. In Canada, it's 420 bucks. So it's a good deal for free. Um, it's, I'm going to open it also. They're actually sending the printer to me, so I'm going to be shipping it to whoever wins it. So I'm going to open it to anybody worldwide who wants to enter. Hi, buddy. If you've seen other videos, you've met Ty already. Um, I'm going to open it to everybody worldwide. The only thing I'm going to say is if you are outside the U.S. or Canada and you do want to enter, you are going to have to be responsible for the shipping costs because I am paying for that out of pocket. So you're going to have to help me out with that a little bit. So there's that. A um, couple other things. Uh, next week or this coming week, I am actually going up to Digit Makers and I'm going to get to shoot a video on the Einscan Pro 2. Um, it's pretty crazy. It's me look at all the bells and whistles. It's about Canadian dollars again. It's about a $13,000 scanner. So I'm really excited about that. Also, Digit Makers is, um, I know I mentioned in my last video, I am going to be doing a, a print and paint movie prop. And I have decided what I'm going to do. At least one, I know I'm going to do two, but at least one of them is designed by this fantastic designer named Henry. And it's going to be Mjolnir. He has a great movie accurate version. And Digit Makers is also going to be sponsoring that by providing all the filament for me. Um, so stay tuned for that. And what else? I wrote some notes right there. Uh, Anycubic is also sending me some of their brand new resin. It's not even released yet. It's a plant-based resin. It's completely tested. It's environmentally friendly. It's biodegradable. It's crazy. So they're sending me a couple of bottles of that. So I'm going to do a great video with that. Um, I may or may not actually do a comparison along with that with the Photon and the Photon S because I have both. Um, we'll see about that. I still have to do a ton of palette videos. Um, I have so many ideas in so little time. And then I would really like to do um, a follow-up video on the Predator. So there's that because I did make a lot of modifications to my board, drivers, extruder, hot end, everything. I even redesigned the effector. Um, so it, it prints really well now and I'm really happy with it. I mean, not that it printed, it didn't print well before, but now it prints really well. Um, and I also got a, a, an Anycubic Chiron, so I may or may not, I, um, I may or may not make a video about that as well. So um, one other thing, I know I've mentioned this before, I don't get paid to do these videos. I do them because I like to do them and I hope to bring some quality content to YouTube. Um, not that there isn't any, because there's a ton, but a little more doesn't hurt. Um, I did just start doing uh, buy me a coffee, so that way, you know, there's no monthly, you have to pay me, you know, $5 a month. If you like my video, buy me a coffee, send me three bucks. Um, I still need to buy that new mic. So, um, other than that, uh, this is Chris from Versus 3D, and this is Tyrion. And uh, take it easy.